I had a big sycamore tree I planted in my backyard. The tree started to split, heavy wind. So I just got my son up there who was probably 10, 12 years old and we drilled a hole in it and put a big piece of threaded rod in there, big washers, and we pulled it together. That's kind of what Jesus did to Becky and I's marriage. It was starting there. He pulled it back together. I, I remember sitting there telling him I'm good people and, and we were good people uh, thinking that even though with my uh, lifestyle that I had, I hadn't done all the things that I thought were bad. You know, uh, Roy never cracked a smile. He let me discover <laughs> good people don't need Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we all need Jesus Christ. The Hy-Vee Deli day started with really exploring Christianity of, you know, the concept of skeptics coming together, asking any questions, and I just remember having a very free flow uh, ability to really speak what I thought. And I came in uh, as a skeptic. I was not a believer um, in a lot of ways why we do church is for guys just like me. I think back on the support that you know, through that small group, how Debbie would have, Debbie and I would have meandered that um, without the support and, um, of being in a group of people that are sharing the same experience um, with Christ and the center of that and going to Him. Um, there's a lot of days, a lot of nights in the backyard on my knees, you know, walking our dog and just crying and, and um, praying and having a community praying for me, praying for us, praying for Shay, praying for me and Debbie, praying for our family. Part of me coming to Christ was just the, the phoniness in which I, God had shown me and just, it's like, wow, you just aren't who you look like, yeah, portray yourself to be. and. Um, and in my marriage, um, I had to deal with some really, really hard stuff. I had to, uh, you know, come clean with a bunch of things that were true uh, as far as my relationship with Michelle. And, um, you know, I, I feared we'd probably would get divorced over this stuff that we were going through. And it was probably the hardest thing that I ever had to do. You know, grew up Catholic, mortal sin, venial sin, yeah, coming to the realization that all sin is equal at the foot of the cross. It all offends God. It doesn't matter what it is. A little white lie, maybe slipping something past the cashier, whatever. Yeah, know. You know, uh, it's all the same. Um, and I don't know. I, I kind of uh, have always been a um, jump in and swim out. If I have to swim, I'll swim. If not, I'll find my way. I'll get away. And, and uh, so I just kind of jumped in and saw, saw what it was about. And uh, it wasn't easy. I've been, still isn't easy. <laughs> thing it's, to me, it's too, it's just, it's, it's, it's ongoing. It's these little um, reminders all the time of why Jesus had to do what he had to do. It's And if I get off track, I feel like God loves me enough to pull me back and show me that again if he needs to. And he does regularly. And I'm, I, that's one of the things I'm most thankful for in my journey. But sure, I mean, I, I remember thinking about, you know, dealing, you know, like pick up your cross every day. You know, I mean, I remember thinking about Introspective. I never thought about you know who I really. I, mean, I thought I was pretty you know pretty decent guy. I was the biggest butthead in the world you know. But um, the tragedy of if I would have never engaged Jesus, I would have been living clueless to that. And and now He shows me something that I was oblivious to be able to see. I remember. Um, you know, you talk about legacy and not even realizing the legacy you're building. It was my 60th birthday. 
they surprised me and we did a big roast chaz. We were having a great time. And um, in the midst of that frivolity and great time, my head was even turned, I think. Shay grabbed the microphone. And I heard her voice and she said, um, I just want to say that because of the decision that he made to investigate Jesus and what he had to say, he has forever changed the trajectory of our family. I, mean, I remember in our men's group, you talking about a, real, a conversation with Mackenzie and how you were burdened by, um, she hadn't made that decision on her own and it spurred me to have a conversation with Chelsea. Right. You know, we talked about the support of each other. Right. And um, going home and, and just praying for a couple days was my I will. I was gonna have this conversation with my daughter. And sure enough, I walked in one day and she was sitting there watching TV and there was no one home but me and her. And I just said, hey, Chelsea, can we talk for a minute? She said, yeah. I said, can you turn the TV off? And um, turn the TV off and just tell her, you know, how much I love her, what she means to me. And I said, you know, you don't need my faith. You don't need anybody else's faith. You don't need my relationship with God. You need your relationship with God. I had tears in my eyes and just saying, I can't imagine being in heaven without you being there with us. And it, and it burdens me and it, and it weighs on me. And I'm not, I'm not trying to guilt trip you at all. And her just being so receptive to the conversation and, and just holding me and telling me thank you and, and kissing me, you know, and me and her hugging and just being um, honest in that moment about um, I want so bad for you to have what he wants you to have. I want you, I want to sit back and watch your relationship with God develop. I want to see that. You think you could communicate with her though because you spent two days praying about it and thinking about it mm -hmm. and, and changing your, you know, that's to me it's that spending time with God and then addressing it. it it's stopping, listening, talking. Yep. This way before you start talking that way oh. and, and then no all question. of a sudden the receptors are, are different. When you talk about the value of, of a community, you go, wow, this is awesome. I got other people that are actually watching out for my own kids with me, like my allies that you don't really even, never really, really occurred to me that I had, but you do. Um, and when I think about the value, um, it, you know, it's, of just connecting, just reasons to connect, you know, it was just trying to, to keep showing up in these opportunities in an authentic way uh, where you can feel like, hey, you know, I really can't tell you what's really going on. The pursuit of trying to be authentic and honest through that has been really important because um, those are critical tools that help me in that journey. It'll always be a journey for me. Um, those are those are invaluable uh, you know, memories for me in terms of connecting that kind of, in that kind of way.